Now we're gonna look at this nice problem from this book that I have called the Wohascombe County Problem Book. So I think this book is pretty hard to find now. I just looked on Amazon, it's almost $200, so it's probably out of print, but I highly suggest this book if you can find it for some reasonable price. So our goal is to find the 10 thousands digit. So that's the fifth digit from the right of this power tower of fives. So I've called it N and it's five to the five to the five to the five to the five. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go. I'll come back with some hints and then a solution. So here are my hints, or maybe we could call it an outline for the solution of this problem. So the first is to find N modulo 100,000. So notice working modulo 100,000, which is also 10 to the five, is like throwing away all of the digits past that fifth digit. But since we're interested in that fifth digit, then we retain all of the information that we need. And so in order to do that, we'll probably wanna reduce this modulo five to the five and two to the five, because that's the prime factorization of 10 to the five. And we can do that using Euler's theorem. And that says if the GCD of A and N is one, then a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n. So this is a generalization of Fermat's little theorem. And I wanna say that this phi of n is Euler's totient function. It counts the number of numbers that are relatively prime to n and less than or equal to n. Then we'll finish this off by solving a system of linear congruences, which we've created right here. And we'll do that using the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we'll jump into the solution. Now we're ready to look at our solution and we're gonna start by reducing n modulo five to the five. And we're actually gonna do that pretty quickly without really saying much about it at all. I'll just put this as an observation. We have n is congruent to zero modulo five to the five. And why is that? Well, that's because this five to the five to the five to the five to the five is clearly a multiple of five to the five. Because notice it's five to the five multiplied to itself, whatever that number is, that many times. I mean, that's a huge number, but it's still a multiple of five to the five. So now let's work modulo two to the five. And we're gonna do that by, like I said, using Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem and I wanna recall a quick way of calculating phi of n, in other words, Euler's totient function. And that is if you've got a prime, which I'll call P, and this works for any prime, although it's a little bit better with our setup because we have P equals two. Anyway, we've got phi of P to the n is equal to P to the n minus P to the n minus one. I've got a proof of this in my number theory playlist if you guys wanna check that out. Okay, so let's notice that if we've got a power of two, then phi of two to the n, well that's two to the n minus two to the n minus one, but that clearly just gives us two to the n minus one. How can you see that? Well maybe factor a two to the n minus one out of this, and we're left with two to the n minus one times two minus one, because this turns into two and that turns into one after the factorization, but two minus one is one, so we're good to go there. Now we're ready to reduce this thing, modulo two to the five, and we're gonna do that by repeated applications of Euler's theorem, and using the fact that as we move up this tower power of fives, we have to keep applying Euler's totient function to see what we're working modulo. Okay, so let's see how to do this. So let's have our big number, five to the five to the five to the five to the five. Okay, so let's see. So we wanna work this whole thing, modulo two to the five, but notice that's the same thing as working mod 32. Two to the five is clearly 32. Okay. But now if we go up one level of this, then we need to work mod phi of 32. In other words, phi of two to the five. Well, that's gonna be two to the five minus one or two to the four. 
So that means one level up here, we need to work mod 16. But then one more level up here, we'll need to work mod eight because phi of 16 is eight. So that means we're calculating here modulo eight. And then finally, if we go up one more level, we have to work mod phi of eight, but that's gonna be mod four. And at this point, four is small enough that it's pretty easy to finish off the calculation at this level. Okay, so we can do that by noticing that five is congruent to one mod four. So that makes this bit right here the same thing as one to the five. But that makes this green thing really just five to the one to the five, but one to the five is just one. So really this is five mod eight. So in other words, we've reduced this quite a bit already. We have reduced this to five to the five to the five, um, and that's working mod 32, like in the grand scheme. And then these top powers are still working mod 16. So perhaps we need to calculate five to the five modulo 16, and we can do that just by repeatedly multiplying by five and reducing modulo 16. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. We'll make a nice chart. So let's say our chart is n, and then five to the n mod 16, and let's work n equals one, two, three, four, five. And we'll see that after reducing mod 16 at every step, this isn't that hard of a calculation. So if we've got n equals one, five to the one is gonna be five mod 16. If we have n equals two, five squared is 25, but 25 is nine mod 16. But now five cubed is gonna be five squared times five, but we can just use that five squared is nine, so that's gonna be nine times five, which is 45. 45 mod 16, well, let's maybe write that in here. 45 mod 16 is really just 13. Then, since 13 is most of the way to 16, it might be easier to think of this as negative three mod 16. Now we can calculate five to the four by multiplying any of those by five. We might as well take the smallest, so we'll take negative three, that'll give us negative 15. But since we're working mod 16, we know negative 15 is the same thing as positive one, just by adding 16 to that. But now multiplying by five again tells us that we just get five here. So in other words, we know that this five to the five mod 16 really just cancels all the way down just to five. And so what we need to calculate at this point is just five to the five mod 32. But now we can play the same game. So I'll maybe skip the calculation, but you guys can check it if you want to. And what we end up with is that we get that five to the five mod 32 is really just 21 mod 32. So that means we have n is congruent to zero mod five to the five, and n is congruent to 21 mod two to the five. So we'll get rid of this and then we'll use the Chinese remainder theorem to find out what N is. On the last board, we determined that our goal number, which we called capital N, was congruent to zero mod five to the five. That was easy to see. And then by some calculations involving Euler's theorem, we showed that it was congruent to 21 mod two to the five or mod 32. Now what we want to do is solve the system of linear congruences defined by those two equations that we have there. So in other words, we want to find an N that satisfies both of these congruences. And we can do that using this thing called the Chinese remainder theorem. So I'll let you guys check what the careful statement of that is. But the proof has this nice algorithm for the solution. And it goes like this. So if the GCD of M and N is one, then this system of congruences, which is capital N is congruent to A mod M, and it's also congruent to B mod N, is solved uniquely, well, the uniqueness is modulo M times N, but that's lucky because notice modulo M times N there will be modulo 100,000, which is exactly what we want. 
by this number right here. So n will be equal to a n y plus b m x, where m x plus n y is equal to one. So let's recall that since the GCD of M and N is one, we can write one as a linear combination of M and N like that. So let's see how this can go. So first off, what we wanna do is find X and Y such that two to the five times X plus five to the five times Y equals one. So in fact, you can get an infinite family of solutions here, but you'll only need one of them and really any of the solutions will be fine. So again, you'll do this with the extended Euclidean algorithm, which I've got some videos on and a bunch of people on YouTube have videos on this. So I won't go through this um, solution, but I will say that it's not super hard. It just takes a bit of time. So what we end up with here is x is equal to 293 and y is gonna be equal to negative three. So you'll notice for those values of x and y, we'll have a linear combination of two to the five and five to the five equals one like that. So now we have all of the parts necessary to build our solution using this Chinese remainder theorem. So let's see what we get. We get n is equal to zero times 293 times two to the five. So that's like this part right here. And then we're gonna add that to negative three times 21 and then times five to the five. So notice we're gonna get a negative number here, but our solution is unique modulo MN. And so we'll exchange that for a positive number as needed. So I wanna point out that this thing is negative 196,875, okay? And let's point out that this is unique modulo 100,000. Well, this number right here is most definitely positive, so that means we need to exchange this for a positive red residue modulo 100,000. And we can do that by adding a multiple of 100,000, that's just like adding zero. So the multiple of 100,000 that we might as well add is 200,000. So again, that'll give us something equivalent, modulo 10 to the five. And what we end up here is 3,125 mod 10 to the five. But notice that's only four digits. Well, what does that tell us? That means that the 10 thousands digit is a zero. So that makes the final answer here zero. And that's a good place to stop.